so glad you're here this morning. As Michelle just said, we are uh, in a brand new series for August. We just started it last week, and it's uh, called Hashtag Squad Goals. And uh, whether you realize it or not, we all have a squad um, at work, at home, at church, the friends you kind of hang out with from your neighborhood. And, and now you may call them your squad. You may call them like your, your crew, your tribe, your, your friend group, you know, uh, whatever you may want to uh, use as language about, uh, around that. The fact is that God created all of us, I believe, to want and to need some friends in our lives. How many would believe that you need some friends in your lives? All right, all right, a few of y'all, okay. <laughs> Rest of y'all are very self-sufficient and uh, I wanna be like you, all right? Um, but, but I believe we all need relationships in our lives and spoken or unspoken, we're all drawn to people and that, that kind of value the same things that we value, uh, people that um, like to do some of the things that we like to do in life. And, and so over this series, we're going to be talking about not just having the importance of having people in your life and having friends in your life, but having a biblical community uh, around you and how important it is to have the right kinds of people around your life. Because you can have some friends that may not be the right kind of friends, right? Garth Brooks said it best. I got friends in low places, right? I won't sing the next line in church, y'all. But, you know, we can have the wrong kinds of friends. I can't believe I just sang a country song. (laughs) Y'all... Anybody who knows me knows I do not like country. I'm sorry for all y'all that do. I love y'all. Enjoy, okay? Enjoy your country. It's not me, but I, you know, it just it popped in my head because the fact of the matter is we can surround ourselves with the wrong people and have the wrong kind of relationships in our lives. So we're, we're going to be talking about the significance of a squad. See, it doesn't matter how old you are, how spiritual, you describe yourself, our friend group, our squad has this significant impact on our lives. So last week, we kind of did some definitions in kind of the opening (coughs) foundation of this series, and we said a squad is defined as a small group of people formed around a common identity or a common purpose. And so if we're going to be all that God wants us to be, I hope that's your desire. It's my desire to live a God-first life where God is important and God is valued and and who he is matters to us and and that we strive to be what he is calling us to be. So if we're going to be who who God wants us to be, then we've got to establish not only the right kind of squad, but we've got to get some goals around the group that we're with that we're kind of punching forward in the right direction. I always loved it when uh, Dominic was in like uh, soccer when he was little. He like started when he was like two years old. And of course, when they're two, they just kind of huddle around the ball and you watch them move from one end of the field to the other. And then some kids are like digging in the dirt and some are like playing around, picking up grass and throwing it at each other. And they're just like not really totally into the game. But what's crazy is when somebody like, the ball comes to them and they're kind of by themselves and they're like, get all excited and they break away. They know they're supposed to kick it towards the goal, but like because they're not really aware of what's happening because they were digging in the dirt, they like start kicking it towards the other team's goal and all of a sudden the crowd is like, oh, no, no, you know, everybody's like, so your, your team, your squad, your friends, you got to be moving in the right direction. You can have some goals for our crew. Squad goals is an aspirational term of what you want your squad relationship to be like. So we've got to have some activities that we're doing with our friends that, that kind of build our relationships, help us to grow together into who God really wants us to be. So friendship would be defined as a relationship with people who are like each other, have fun together, share common interests, values, and goals, and are each invested in the relationships 
development and growth. I love that last part, that we're each invested in that relationship's development and growth. Ever felt like you were in a one-sided relationship where you were kind of fully invested, you're kind of all in trying to help this thing grow and develop, and you feel like on the other side maybe there's a lack of interest or maybe they're like not fully invested or engaged in the same things you are, and it becomes a challenge in that relationship. So you may hang out with people, you may have acquaintances, but unless they are investing in the growth and development of the relationship, I'm here to tell you they're really probably not your friends. See, one of the key ingredients of a friend and a squad is that uh, they are people that have your back. Not only do they say, I got you, but they back that up with their actions. Uh, Any of you long for friends that talk about you behind your back? Anybody want friends that are judging you when you're not there? Uh, Can I tell you that if you're in a friend group and when somebody's not there, your friends are talking about the other friends that are not present, guess what happens when you're not present? Come on now. We want a squad that's got us. We want to know that we can rely on them, that we can trust them. We want friends that know our weaknesses and they're not going to attack us in those areas. They're going to protect us in those areas. They say, I got you. David talks about in Psalm 139 some intentionality of relationships. Psalm 139, verse 13 to 15, it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. It was intentional. It was purposeful how God has put us together. And let me just pause right here and say this. There are no accidents here. Regardless of how your life came to be, regardless of of what the situation was when you were conceived, you are not an accident. Scripture says that God formed you. God knit you together in your mother's womb. He put you and made you and created you and who you're supposed to be. See, I'm not a very scientific person, but on a simple level, I understand that God took DNA from your father and DNA from your mother and brought them together. I think they got a picture up on the screen. That's the, the helix of the DNA, or, 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 or at least a, a picture representation of that. And uh, uh, when we think about uh, the expanse of who God is, and we think about the millions and millions of stars that are, are the vast expanse of space, we, we think of like, man, God is so awesome. God is so big. Think about the universe and how big God is. And yet God is so intentional about your unique identity that he put your DNA together, not just in your body, but in every cell of your body. He knit you together to create who you are with your eye color, your hair color, your lots of hair, your little hair, <laughs> your personality. He puts you together. In fact, it is so purposeful that he saw you generations ago and put generations together so that at this point in time, you would be created just how you are. They say one DNA cell or one DNA strand out of 
one cell, if it was unraveled, it would be about six feet tall. Just one. Y'all like my guy with his sunglasses? <laughs> now listen to this. It's, it, it's, they say that the average human being has 37 trillion cells. So if one DNA strand out of one cell in your body is six feet tall if it was unraveled, and then you have close to 37 trillion cells in your body, that means your body is about 42 billion miles of DNA if it was stretched out. See, God's fingerprint, His intentionality for you, it stretches 42 billion miles in your DNA. They say that the moon is about 240,000 miles from Earth. And the DNA in your body can go to the moon and back 88,000 round trips if it was stretched out. I mean, I'm just trying to get you to kind of wrap your mind around all of this. When God made you, he did it on purpose. Uh, verse 16 says, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I love the, 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 the new song that we sang today that says, I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You knit me together. All the days of my life were ordained before I was even born. See, God didn't just create your physical being and your attributes and your personality and how you look. He also understood what your life was going to be like. He understood the difficulties, the challenges, the opportunities, the things that were going to come to you. And he pre-planned for those things. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. Some of you have faced some really hard things in life. Challenges that have made you stronger. And I want to tell you, God didn't bring all those things to you, but he knew they were coming. He prepared for them, in fact, so that it would be woven into that DNA of who you are and how you would be able to overcome it. Can I tell you this morning, you are a handcrafted masterpiece of the Father. Yes. Not only did He create you with incredible strengths in your life, but can I tell you, I believe He handpicked your weaknesses. Some of you are like, what? I believe He handpicked your weaknesses. And I'm not talking about the sin faults in your life, but I'm I'm talking about the things that um, you're just not good at. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm willing to try just about anything. And in the age of YouTube, <laughs> come on, somebody. My brother's totally rebuilding and remodeling his whole house. I mean, pulled it, pulled it down to the studs, rewired, replumbed everything and I don't know where he learned how to do that, except for I know he has a good, strong internet connection, and he knows how to search YouTube. He, he has done those things. I, I, I like to think of myself somewhat as a renaissance man. I could do it all, right? There's a lot of things I can do, but when it comes to, like, mechanics, I'm probably not your guy. <laughs> I mean, I could try to help, and there's a few things that I've done in the past. Uh, you know, I've, I've changed quite a few uh, alternators over the years. <laughs> um, in the rain, uh, whatever, I've done that. But I realize that mechanics is not my strength. That's, that, that, that's why I, I need somebody else to help me in that area of my life. See, God gave us strengths, but he also gave us weaknesses. And, and, and uh, what we have to ask ourselves is, if God is so great and he's building us with such intentionality and purpose, why does he put weaknesses in us? And I think it's because we don't 
just rely on ourselves. Because I have weaknesses, I have to depend on some other people. I got to develop some relationships in my life where there are people that are stronger than I am in certain areas that can help me. Uh, I, you know, we, we need a squad. We need people that have our backs. So, so he in, intentionally, God intentionally allows us to have some weaknesses so that we will rely on others. Otherwise, we just want to be independent and do it all ourselves. So, so we need people. We're built that way. That's why I have a friend who is a mechanic. So I don't, I don't mess things up, right? I, it's funny. His name is Brady. When I call Brady uh, on his cell phone, I, he sees my number come up, and he doesn't answer hello anymore. When I call Brady, he says, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> he knows something's broke. He knows something's a problem. He knows I got a question about something mechanical. Uh, my weakness is his strength. See, like, I pop the hood and say, man, there's an engine there. Yep. Yep, there's an engine there. <laughs> Boy, that's a big one. <laughs> I mean, he pops the hood, and he can, like, tell you what every part is. He can take it all apart. He can put it back together, and guess what? He doesn't have leftover pieces like I would. Eh, I don't think we need this vault. <laughs> Colossians 3 verse 12 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. Catch that part. Somebody needs to hear that today. You are dearly loved by God. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. We are to be different people from those that are not followers of Christ. This verse says we are to be holy people. Uh, it says that we should, uh, uh, you know, it's not saying we should judge others. It, it's saying that, that as holy people we're different because we clothe ourselves with some things that are important to have in our lives. He, he gives us five things here that we need. We need tenderhearted mercy Kindness, humility, goodness, and patience. He describes it as we dress ourselves with those things. And, and I have to ask you, when do you get dressed? When do you all get dressed? Mornings? Y'all get dressed at night and then go to bed and then just jump up and I'm ready to go? I know school's back in. That's, that's probably the most. If y'all have a middle school boy, that's what he does. You know, he gets dressed at night, goes to bed, he wakes up, and it's time to get up, and I'm ready. You know? I got a high schooler. He don't do that. <laughs> he was once in middle school. No, I'm just joking. What Paul is saying that is something that we got to do every day. We got to get up with, with intentionality that, like, I'm going to put these things on today in my life. Like, I chose what shirt I was going to wear today, what jeans I was wearing today, what shoes I would wear today. I, I chose those and put those things on. And, and God is saying in our, our lives, we need to choose to put some of these other things on. Kindness, compassion, humility, gentleness, patience. It's just like we, we put these things into our lives and if we're going to have good friends and if we're going to be a good friend, we got to clothe ourselves with these characteristics because uh, we're going to we're going to need a squad today, and you, you're going to run some people off if you don't have some kindness. Uh, you, you're not going to keep them very long if you don't have some compassion and some humility and some gentleness. So, so you know, maybe in the mornings you got to grab the coffee, we got to talk to Jesus, read His Word, and then I need to say. God, I need some tender-hearted mercy today. Will you pour it into me? Lord, I, I, I need to be kind today. There's going to be some people that are not going to be nice to me. Help me to be kind to them. Lord, help me to be humble today. Lord, I, I know I get too big for my britches sometimes. I like want to step up and kind of think I'm all that in a bag of chips, but I know I'm not, and I don't want you to have to remind me just give me a humble spirit, Lord. Yet give me gentleness and patience to deal with the people that are going to be in my life today. 
So today I want to share just real quickly just a few things with you, a few characteristics of squads. And here's the first one. Squads or friends or your tribe or your relationships, whatever you want to call it, they, they get ready for the relationship every day. They get ready every day for their relationships. Just, just as our military and our first responders prepare every day physically to be ready for that moment that they're called on. You know, we, <laughs> uh, we were coming home last night from being out, and, and as we were driving through Haines City, uh, there was a fire engine that come by, Haines City fire engine come by, and then in a minute there was like a sheriff's deputy you know, car that went flying by us with the lights on. And our comment was, have y'all noticed how jacked the Haines City firemen are? <laughs> like we've seen them like at the, the restaurants and stuff. And most of these guys are like these big, burly, tough guys. And why did they get that way? Just because they want to be like, you know, Mr. Macho? I don't think so. I think they're preparing for the job that they have to do every day. Because at a moment's notice, they're going to be called on to rescue someone. And it may require them to have more strength than what we would just normally have because I didn't prepare today to have to climb three flights of stairs and carry somebody that's 200 pounds on my back. But man, if I, I needed somebody to carry me down the ladder, I want one of them big old Haines City guys carry me because they, they, they've, they've prepared. They've worked. They've trained for what they're going to have to face. And, and we gotta, we've got to do that ourselves every day. I, I'm not just talking physically. I'm talking spiritually and relationally. We've got to take some time to spend with God and ask Him to work in our hearts and our minds and with our attitudes to prepare us as we interact with other people every day. Some of y'all work on jobs with some people that you're like, God, I need your help. <laughs> I need your help for the people I got to work with. Colossians 3, verse 13, the beginning of that verse says, Make allowance for each other's faults. Let me just let that one sink in one more time. Make allowance for each other's faults. How many realize that you might ought to prepare for the people in your lives that are going to have faults. Some of them live under the same roof with you. People have faults. When we moved uh, back to Florida uh, in 2012, um, we lived in the Auburndale community, and uh, there was a... a there's a, there's a church, it's like, I don't know, 100 and something old, St. Albans Episcopal Church right in downtown Auburndale, very beautiful church. At the time, the, uh, the pastor there was uh, named Father Bud, and uh, uh, Father Bud was a pretty amazing guy. I really, really loved him. He had a heart for people, a heart for young people in that community. I mean, he did a lot of stuff to reach people, and he was friends with uh, my pastor there, Shane, and uh, we had Father Bud come preach at our church, at Life Church there when we were that, uh, back at one of our Christmas services uh, back in 2012, and uh, I'll never forget one of the things Father Bud said in his sermon. He was and he said, y'all know there are people inside of people and, and it may not sink into you like it has to me, but it, it, that thought that there's people inside of people. People are going to be good sometimes. People are going to be crazy sometimes. But you can't expect everybody to be perfect because there's people inside of people. And, and, and so people are going to respond different ways and people are going to have good days and people are going to have bad days and people are going to be likable and people are going to be unlikable and people are going to get on your last nerve sometimes and people are going to love you with compassion and mercy but there's people inside of people and, and, and so sometimes people are going to fail you. People are going to make mistakes. Uh, they're going to have faults. And so if we're going to deal with our squad in the right way, we've got to get ready every day to face those moments where we're going to have to make some allowances 
to give some grace to our friends. Anybody ever need some grace? Anybody have learned how to give the grace? Characteristics of squads. Squads get ready for relationships every day. Here's number two. Squads cover one another's faults, failings, and mistakes. The world tells us that when we find a fault or a weakness in somebody else, we ought to exploit that for our own advantage, right? Uh, But we don't do that if we're in a good squad with, with, with good people. See, when we see someone in our squad falling or failing or faltering or having trouble, our response needs to be, hey, I got you. I got you. Let me help you in this situation. Now, be clear, I'm not saying that we should cover over sin in people's lives and just like, hey, let them go on and never confront them. Sometimes if we're in a a good, close relationship, a squad, that's the perfect place that God has called you to confront somebody and and be the kind of friend that says, I love you enough to not let you stay the way that you're, you're going. What I'm saying is that we got to see somebody that's operating in, our weak, in their weakness and we got to come alongside them and bring some strength to help them and to cover that place where they're weak. The second part of that, verse 13 in Colossians 3 says, and forgive anyone who offends you. We did a whole sermon series on offenses a little earlier uh, this year. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. I'm going to tell you, that's hard. That's a hard thing to do. I don't like forgiving those who offend me, right? My natural desire is I, 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 I got to get back at them. But God's word for us today is that we need to forgive and forgive quickly. If you hear anything else... Learn how to forgive and forgive quickly. Uh, Characteristics of squad, we've shared a couple. Here's number three. Squads plan on being offended and forgiving. Maybe you should look at your neighbor right now and just take the pressure off by saying, hey, I forgive you for what you're going to do. Just take the pressure. I'm going to forgive you for what you're going to do later today. I'm going to need your help, and you're going to be like laid out on the couch. I forgive you. I forgive you for what you're going to do. Uh, now, this is not uh, giving permission uh, for, by any means for them to, to, to intentionally do some things like that, but, but you're, you're planning on forgiving them when they offend you later. Hey, if you're in a, if you're in a marriage relationship, if you're in a family relationship, You need to learn how to do that. Plan to forgive. Plan to forgive because there's going to be times where where you're going to to upset each other. There's going to be times where you're going to fail one another. And and, and the the goal should not be, well, I'm going to get back at them. The goal should not be like, well, (laughs) I'm going to teach them a lesson. They do that to me. You got it coming. Uh, No, our goal should be to forgive. And to forgive quickly, I'm planning on forgiving them for offending even before they do it, rather than being shocked at what they've done. So many of us, we get offended and we're like, (gasps) we suck the air out of the room. I'm so shocked. I can't believe she said that to me. Did you see what he posted on social media? (gasps) Can I tell you, instead of being shocked if we plan to forgive ahead of time, things might work out a lot differently. Honestly, one of the best things that we can do, ways we can do this is by believing the best in other people. Unfortunately, we're living in a day and an age where, and we're living in a culture where we we make snap decisions based on something somebody says or maybe a post they make or a text message that they have or, or whatever. And a good friend covers their squad. They actually plan on being offended and forgiving. 
They, they, they plan on trying to work things out. Colossians 3, 14 and 15 says, Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body you are called to live in peace. And always be thankful. See, when we let peace rule our hearts, we'll be less likely to judge. Judgment causes us to get kind of all worked up and angry about what we think might have happened before we have a chance to talk to that person and kind of get the real story. We can spend a lot of emotional energy on hypotheticals that sometimes aren't even true. None of y'all done that, right? God says, let peace rule your heart. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that we are never going to have conflict or we're never going to have trouble. Uh, but when you feel yourself kind of getting all juiced up, rather than reacting, we need to allow peace that really can only come from Christ to fill our hearts. See, you don't have to have peace just in and of yourself this is a peace that comes from God, uh, from the Holy Spirit that's at work within us. Here's the, uh, the last characteristic of a squad I wanted to share today. Squads thrive in peace, not complaining, criticizing, or judging. Complaining, criticizing, and judging, they'll just destroy your friendship relationships. But when you live in peace, it brings everybody together. And it makes you stronger together. We say it around here all the time. We're better together. Uh, reading on in Colossians 3, verse 16 and 17 says, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom that he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord, Jesus, giving thanks through him to God, the Father. As you live in your relationships, as you deal with your friendship circle, your, your tribe, your squad, do it as representatives of the Lord Jesus Christ is what this scripture says. So we close this morning when, when squads represent God's love. It's a testimony to everybody in the world around us how God's love has affected us and how he's changed our hearts and our lives. I'm telling you, when you can live in a kind of friendship relationship that, man, we can overlook somebody's weakness and, and, and we can help bring strength when there is weakness and when we can bring peace to a, a troubled situation and when we can kind of not judge or criticize or, or, or get offended very easily, but when we can like choose to forgive and forgive quickly. It is a testimony to all those around us of, man, look at what God has done. Look at what God is doing in their life. See, when we love our friends, when we get up in the, in the mornings and asking God to help us to prepare for the, the faults in our friends that we encounter, when we ask God to help us walk in our day expecting to, to be offended and planning to forgive others, when we make the decision to let peace rule our hearts, you can build a relationship group that has these same kind of goals where it'll help you grow together and enjoy the fullness of what God has for you. You'll have people in your life that, that'll say, hey, I got you. I got you. I'm with you. That's, that's what hope groups are supposed to be about here at One Hope. A group of people that can stand with you in the good times, stand with you in the difficult moments, to be there to help encourage you in your faith and to, to, to stand with you and, and, and help you in your weakness. I got you. I got your back. I got you when you're weak. I got you when you're struggling. I got you when you fall and you fail and you blow it. And, and, and when we do that, we become a testimony to the world around us 
of how great God's love is and how awesome relationships can be when we do it God's way. Let me pray for you this morning. Jesus, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts, loving you, Lord, and thanking you for your love for us. Lord, I I thank you today for the friends that you've placed in our lives. Lord, we're grateful for those relationships that you've brought our way. And Lord, I pray for today those that are in this room that are looking for a, a squad in their life. They're looking for some strong relationships, some Christian, godly relationships that, that could be able to be a blessing and, and, and be a help to their lives. I, I pray that as they prepare themselves every day that you would place them in that right friend group that you've already prepared for them, Lord. Lord, for those that are already part of a good, strong squad, a good, strong friend group, I I pray that if there are things in our lives or in our group where we need to forgive or maybe ask for forgiveness for, I pray that you'd help us to be quick to do that, Lord. God, I pray that you would give us the ability to kind of let go of some things that we've been holding on to. Maybe some release some offenses, to, to, to give some grace, to give some mercy, to give forgiveness and to show your love through our lives. Lord, where we've been judgmental, I, I pray that we'd repent of that today. Lord, we're going we're gonna to think differently about that person or that situation. And I just want to pray blessings today over friendships and the blessing of living in the fullness of a squad that's got our back today. Lord, we love you. We pray this today in the strong and mighty name of Jesus. Hey, uh, before we close the service this morning, just as we kind of stay in this same moment of prayer. As you reflect this morning in this moment, maybe today the most important friendship that's lacking in your life is is really not a husband or wife or a son or daughter or a friend at work or friend in your neighborhood or friend at church. Maybe the, the greatest friendship you're missing in your life is a friendship with God. Today, if you were honest, you might know that when it comes to God and Jesus, maybe there really isn't a true relationship there. Maybe you know about God, you know about Jesus, you've heard about them, you try to do the best that you can, but maybe you've never really taken that step of faith to step out and say, God, I come to you, Lord, with all my faults and failures. And I just want to give them to you. I, I want to receive the, the love and the grace and the mercy that comes from Jesus. See, the good news is God loves you. He, he loved you before you ever loved Him. He loves you even when we haven't loved Him back. But the Bible says He sent His Son, His perfect Son, to be the sacrifice for for us so that he could bridge the gap between a, a holy God and, and a sinful person like us, a person that's separated from God. Jesus bridges that gap with the sacrifice that he made on the cross. And today what he asks of us if, is if we don't have that kind of relationship with him, what he asks is that we just open our hearts to him and that we receive him into our lives. So today I'd love to pray for you in that, that way, whether you're here in this room or you're watching online right now. See, the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that He will rescue you and He will give you salvation and peace for your soul. Forgiveness today can be found in Him. So if that's you, would you just join me in praying this prayer right now, right where you're at? Let me lead you. Dear Jesus, Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sin. Please forgive me. Come live inside of me and make me new. I receive your love. 
I receive your salvation. I give you my life. I make you my Lord, my Savior, my soon coming King. I love you today, Lord. Thank you for the hope that I have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate those that are making that commitment today. Let me just say, if you prayed that prayer, whether you're here or you're watching online, we'd love to connect with you, and there's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, You can text the word HOPE to 863-777-5639. You can email me at prayer at onehopechurch.org. If you're here today in service, I'm going to be in the lobby. You can stop by and just say hello and say, hey, I prayed that prayer today. We'd just love to come alongside with you and, and let you know that, hey, you're not alone in this journey of faith. We want to stand with you. Well, hey, as we close today, we always close with a blessing. Why don't you stand this morning right where you're at? We always do our blessing this way. We say, if you want a little blessing, you can put your hands out like this. But if you want a big blessing, you can stretch out your arms like this. And we pray that the Lord would bless you, that the Lord would keep you, that his face would shine on you and show you his favor this week. Hey, we love you guys. God bless you. Hey, grace and peace to your house is our prayer for you. Have a great week. (laughs) 